we are talking about forces, type of things that can uh, knock you unconscious, which is why I'm wearing a hard hat. And we'll first talk about some easy stuff like weight, but then, perhaps most importantly, we're going to start talking about free body diagrams and how to draw them and how to put all the forces on there and what to do with those. When people ask you for your weight, although they may not know it, technically they're not asking for your mass in kilograms. They're asking for how much the force of gravity is pulling you downwards. And you use this simple equation to calculate that with mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And that G in the IB data booklet is about 9.81 meters per second squared. But we usually round it to 10. So take a minute, calculate all these weights, and draw an appropriate arrow. Pause it, won't take you long, because this is going to be 1 times 10, which is going to be 10 newtons. Newtons is our unit of force for weight and for all forces. This will be 40 newtons, and this one, to I should draw even longer, but it's going to be 180 newtons. So always take a mass, multiply it by 10, and you've got the weight. Now hopefully you know that forces are vectors. They have a direction. And something else important, ba boom, is that often force causes acceleration in the direction that the force, the unbalanced force, is going. Maybe something doesn't move, though, and maybe the force only causes something to squish or deform. The units for this are the Newton abbreviated with just capital N, and a Newton breaks down into this. You should have get that memorized. Free body diagrams are very helpful when you have an object and you want to simplify what the forces are that are important and later what the uh, accelerations may be on that object. Now to make a good free body diagram, there's some simple rules. And let's say you've got rule number one, simplify your object. I usually like to simplify my object just as a dot. Rule number two, draw your forces. And I like to connect them to the object. So I've got a force of weight going down here. And of the same size, I have what I'm going to call N. These are the same size, so we're going to show that. Now N stands for doo -doo -doo, the normal force. And that is, as it says here, always perpendicular. So from a floor, it's always going to be going straight up. If you've got something at an angle, then it's going to be going perpendicular to whatever surface is at that angle. Now, I labeled my forces normal and weight, and then if there's any acceleration, I show that. Uh, there is no acceleration, so I'm going to write that acceleration is equal to zero. That's it. That's my free body diagram. That was an easy one. Here's a slightly more difficult one. Read the problem, draw yourself a free body diagram, and see if you can find what it's asking for. Pause it and do that now. Hopefully you represented the sled simply as a dot or a square or something like that. And the first and most obvious force is a very large weight that you could calculate in your head as 95 times 10. Then you should have the most obvious thing is a normal force. That's no longer going to be equal to weight because it's pulling, there's a horse helping to pull up. And so that lessens the normal force. And so we don't really know what that is. Then you've got the force of the horse, of course. <laughs> that is at an angle. And nowhere near as strong as the other ones of, it's going to be 21 degrees. And it says that this is 180 newtons. So I might just draw that in just like that. Then I've got friction which has to be working against the motion, because we know this is accelerating to the right. Uh, I'm going to draw that of a small size. And I'm going to call that small f for friction, and I know that that one is 150. 
And that's it. That's all my forces. I should also draw in acceleration, which is to the right. Do not draw that as a force connected to your uh, dot. That will confuse the matters. Now it says, what is this net horizontal force? Well, I do some trig, and I break this down into components. And using 180 cosine 21, I find that this horizontal component is about, when I round it, I think 170-ish newtons. And the vertical component is about 65-ish newtons. Now for the horizontal, I'm going to take 170 minus 150. And I'm going to end up with about 20 newtons to the right. That's my first answer. If I want to find the normal force, I have to realize that it's going nowhere in the vertical. And so my ups forces are going to balance my down force. So the two ups, which is going to be the normal, plus this upward component, 65, are going to equal the 950 Newton force. And so I rearrange this, and when I solve for n, I'm going to get a normal force of something like 885 Newtons, which maybe I should round to two sig figs, maybe 880 or 890 whatever you want to call it.